Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, you may have seen in the past some videos that I released on patch antennas specifically for receiving InMosSat, GPS, and Iridium satellites. Now, all of those videos had specific patch antennas for the desired frequency, which ranged between 1.5 and 1.6 gigahertz. Well, RTL SDR blog have just released a new L-band patch antenna, which is actually version two, which will cover from 1.5 to 5 gigahertz all the way up to 1.660 gigahertz. Now this covers InMosSat, Iridium and GPS all in one patch antenna. So how does this fare up against the older version one patch from RTL SDR? Well, it's larger in size, which means more gain. And this brings a wider radiation pattern, making it easier to locate satellites. This patch antenna also has an onboard low noise amplifier and a saw filter to help reduce terrestrial interference. This is all powered via a bias T voltage of between 3.3 and 5 volts, which can be provided from your SDR receiver. So in the box, we get a suction mount, which is extremely useful for mounted onto glass or windows. And we also get a mini flexible tripod, which can be bent into all types of shapes. Now this makes it easy to mount the patch onto a pole, a tree, the ground, a fence, or pretty much anywhere you like. So also included is a two meter length of RG174 coax, which is used to connect between your SDR receiver and the patch antenna. Now it's not recommended to connect your SDR receiver directly to the patch due to the possibility of interference. Now the patch itself is enclosed in a waterproof box with just an SMA connector exposed for connecting to your receiver. We also have a standard thread mount to allow mounting to the supplied mounts or to your own, such as a camera tripod. So before we go on to test the patch, let's take a look inside to see how it works. So first I need to remove eight screws, which hold the top cover on. These are moderately tightened to ensure the waterproof still stays effective. Now, once we have the lid off, we can see a silver reflector plate, which appears to be a PCB. And then we have the copper driven plate mounted in the middle. Now, my first impressions are that this is built extremely well and very professional. Now, the specifications say that this patch includes an LNA and a filter. So it must be on the underside of the PCB. So let's take a look. Now there are four screws holding down the reflector plate and then just a nut over the SMA connector. These need to be removed before the patch can be removed from the plastic housing. So here we have the patch completely removed from the plastic housing. Now notice the rubber seal around the housing for keeping it waterproof. So on the back of the PCB, we have some print confirming the patch's frequency range. You'll also notice that this patch is RHCP which stands for right hand circular polarized. Therefore, when using with InMarsat, for example, you just point the patch to the satellite. You cannot use this in conjunction with a satellite dish unless the signal you're receiving is actually left hand circular polarized as the dish reflection changes polarization. Then we have the components which makes up the LNA and the filter. Now what's interesting here is that there is a USB B type socket which can be seen on the board. Now, presumably this could be used for powering the patch if bias T is not available from your receiver, but this is just a guess. And once the housing is back together, there's no way to actually access this USB port. So let's put it back together and go and mount it outside. So here we're using the supplied suction cup mount. And in this first test, I want to receive InMarsat. As InMarsat satellites are geostationary, I'll need to point the patch directly towards the satellite. The suction cup mount has enough movement so I can angle the patch correctly. Let's take a look at the signals from InMarsat. So the first signal we're picking up here is the NCS channel. Now this contains information relating to maritime safety messages and alerts. Now I left this running for a few hours and managed to decode quite a few interesting messages using both the Skytail C decoder and the Techmanoid decoder. More information about these decoders and how to set them up can be found on my YouTube channel. Now, another portion of the InMarsat covers ACARS, which is messages between aircraft and ground stations. There are a few different types of data streams we can use. We have 600 BPS, 1200 BPS, and 10,500 BPS. As you can see here, the signals are very strong. Even the normally weaker 10,500 BPS signals 
or strong enough to decode quite easily. Another type of data this antenna is designed to receive is GPS signals, but just how well does it work? Well, for this test, we need to place the antenna horizontal with the top facing upwards towards the sky. Here you can see I'm using the little bendy tripod legs that came with this patch antenna to firmly attach it to the top of a pair of step ladders. We will also use this configuration to test receiving Iridium, but first let's load up some GPS decoding software to see how well this works. So here we have GNSS SDR lib and RTK lib applications running. And as you can see, we're receiving around six satellites with a nice lock. Well, the antenna itself is actually around two meters away from a wall. So I would expect it to work even better if it was more in the clear. However, even in this position, we're able to get a GPS lock. Now the last signal type this patch antenna is designed to receive is transmissions from the Iridium satellite network. These signals are around 1.6 gigahertz, so slightly higher in frequency than that of Inmarsat and GPS satellites. Now I'm not going to show you how to decode Iridium in this video as it's quite complex, but I do have a dedicated video on how to decode Iridium signals using the Iridium toolkit. Now what I can show you is the data transmissions that are coming directly from Iridium as they're flying overhead. Now there are many Iridium satellites which cover almost all of the globe at the same time. They're not geostationary, so they're always moving and you'll see a signal fade in and fade out as one satellite moves away from the horizon to the next one coming in. Now the SDR receiver used in this video was an RTL SDR version 3 USB dongle, just like this one. Now the only thing I needed to do was to make sure that I ran the BIOS T driver application before using any of this software shown in the video. Now I will be announcing a giveaway soon where you'll be able to win one of these RTL SDR V3 dongles. So keep an eye out for that video. Well, there we go guys. That's an overview of the brand new version two patch antenna from RTL SDR blog. All of the software that I've covered in this particular video, I've dedicated videos on how to use it and set it up. So if you're interested in any of these things, go ahead and have a look through my back catalog and I'm sure you'll be able to find them. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. As always, a massive thank you to my patrons, a massive thank you to my YouTube subscribers, my members, and also thank you to RTOSDR blog for sending me this patch antenna. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.